we're back for another video which means turning some switches on my apprentice has given me another desk job this is her uh, latest obsession which is a little hamster now these are designed to uh, run around at random and do their things in their little ball and uh, it's supposed to make squeaking sounds which this one doesn't doing a bit of internet research uh, it's not an uncommon fault for them so we're going to uh, open up, have an inspect, and see if it's not something easy to fix. So let's get cracking. So we need some screwdrivers. A couple of things uh, when I looked at this ahead of time. These are triangular screws. They're not tri-wing, they're something else, but they were put in with a torque-limited screwdriver. So there's a pretty easy way to get them out. In any case, we're going to uh, do the obligatory thing first and remove the batteries. Now this is uh, an interesting drive system, I haven't seen anything quite like that before and the batteries are the same way around which is also I find unusual but uh, it is what it is. So uh, we can't get too much from here, we're going to get these uh, triangular screws out. Now I'm going to choose a middle sized flat blade screwdriver, that one is a little too big, we'll go down a size. We're going to wedge it in here, and because these haven't been put in too tightly, they're going to back out pretty nicely with a flat blade driver. That works nicely. Okay. Now we've got all our screws out. Let's see if we can separate the halves. Let's try a spudger here. Let's see if we can pull this out. It looks like these might be locator pins. This might be glued together too. There we go, there is the ring, that is our drive unit still, and uh, so these locator pins are obviously to keep the fur on, which means I might be able to be very gentle and pop the fur off, take its skin off, it's how to skin a hamster. Okay, well at this point I don't think we really need to worry about the nose, there is indeed a speaker in here, so that implies it's meant to make sound, and there are standard Phillips screws for the left and right sections of the shell. So we're going to not remove that any more than we have to. Let's um, remove these clamshell sections. This is much easier than like the little live pets. So this is our sound module, which I can see dry solder join to start with. We're going to just remove this button section. Um, this is just a little plastic bit to help push the tactile switch. So I think I can probably remove this whole module. We can, okay, that gets the bulk of the stuff out of the way. So there's our speaker. Let's have a close up look here and see what's going on. So our speaker appears to be connected properly with some dodgy joins. Um, we appear to have power. These are definitely dry solder joins. So that chip I would posit is doing most of the random stuff. This is going to be a little sound chip under the blob. Now I wonder what's going on here. I'm going to do a little bit of homework. Okay, so firstly I need to do some continuity testing. Um, and we're going to check our speaker. So each side of the speaker is connected. Okay, um, so our speaker is hooked up properly. Let's see if we can work out some of the other connections here. Well, we're reasonably confident the power is connected. Um, we can check here, okay, and this one is pretty good, and our link between the battery sections is good, okay, and our motor drive power is good, so, because it does run around, so we know that most of these connections are okay. What's going on with the sound chip is something a little different. I might need to, there is a serial number on that, I might need to go look it up and see if there's something we should be doing. Now, I may have forgotten to push the record button here, but we did resolder this joint and we reflowed these four. Let's put some batteries back in, see if it makes noises. Okay, let's push the button. So it's got an, an eccentric wheel here to make it wriggle around, I think. All right, so I've just re-soldered the speaker connections. See if that makes any difference.
There is another pad here not soldered on that chip. It could be just a ground plane. Hang on. I see something here. All right, let's have a look here. So this, this pin is not connected here. Um, and that runs that track all the way around to battery positive in that button there. That could be a trigger wire. So I've taken one leg off the speakers and we're going to go to ohms mode right down to 200 because this should be an 8 ohm speaker. Let's see what we get across this. I'm getting no resistance across that speaker, but then again I'm getting no resistance across my probes. It could be my dodgy probes striking again. Alright, we're going to break out the better meter, the one that I carried with me for years in the field that I left in the back for a bit and suddenly went all powdery and funny looking. Let's have a look. We are going to test across these two. We still don't have arms. The probes are reading correctly. The speaker is not. I have an old PC speaker now, which are getting difficult to find because most PCs use piezo beepers now. Let's test this for resistance. Uh, this one is registering about 7.9 ohms, more or less what we would expect. It's not in perfect condition, but uh, let's get this junk off the back of it and put some clip leads on. All right, let's try this. Haha! -ha. It was just a dodgy speaker. All right, so I decided to look at this under the microscope. Let's start the recording. Okay, so I'm looking here at one wire that comes in off the coil. And then I see another wire that comes off the coil here that appears to be broken. It'll be this bit right here. I think if I can push this up here, I might be able to fix this speaker. Yep, that is definitely an orphaned wire there. I'm going to put some solder on that, see if we can fix this up. All right, we've got our probes on here. And I'm detecting resistance now. Looks like about 8 ohms. Let's solder the wires up and see what it sounds like. Okay, let's try now with a repaired speaker. Okay, that sounds good. Let's put it all back together again. Yeah, we're just putting this back together again. I have to say, I have uh, skinned a few rodents in my time, but it's probably one of the first times I've had to put the skin back on again. Um, generally, things don't behave the same way once you put the skin back on. All right. Let's see if I can get this in here. Pull you up a bit. Pretty well on there. I'm using a bit of a trick I use with tweezers. I hook it through, lever it up, and slide it down over that pin. Um, and it seems to be a fairly effective method to get these back on. I thought I'd stop and pause at this point, expecting that most people would have trouble with this bit of it. All right, let's um, just pop this open. We'll whack a battery in it, see if it behaves as expected. But this is the Zuru Pets Alive Hamster. I'll have to remember that for the title. Oh, just like a hamster, suicidal. Oh, definitely adds a different element to it. Let's put it in its hamster ball. How are we? I think it's supposed to run around inside the hamster ball. It works. My, pre my apprentice is going to be very happy with this. And um, yeah, we'll see you in the next repair video.